face it, you're never going to get my power. Do I look like I need your power? Stellaris Overlord has just been released, and as far as expansions go, it is perfectly balanced as all things should be. But what if I told you it was possible to get the mega engineering technology, yes, yes, the mega engineering technology, within the first 60 years of the game. In fact, we can probably manage to roll that technology in just 55 short years. On top of that, we can also turn this new vassal system topsy-turvy and make it so that the overlords are the ones in the negative position. I promise you I haven't gone mad, so let's dive in and take a look at the empire we're going to be playing as. The Imperial Thief Origin is one of the new origins we've had with Stellaris Overlord. Now what does this do? First, you're going to get to start the game as a vassal of an advanced AI empire, and secondly, you'll then get to choose the option to become a specialist vassal type at the start of the game. But, but surely, starting as the vassal of another empire would be a bad thing? This, this doesn't seem overpowered in, in any way at all. I am sure it is perfectly balanced. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Otherwise, we'll grab some pretty nice traits, some nice civics. Uh, I've gone with technocracy and fanatic materialist because, as you all know, the best way to break the universe is to tech your way out of it. So we're going to be doing just that. At the very beginning of the game, you're going to get the choice to choose which type of specialist you want to be. We could be a military focused subject or we could be a material and mineral and economic focus subject. Or the third option, and the option I think is definitely going to be a little bit overpowered because of what we can do with it, is the Scholarium. Now, if we choose a Scholarium, we will have to pay some of our research and technology to our overlord, the Holy Velet Empire, but we will receive a science ship and a scientist from the Holy Velet Empire and possibly quite a bit extra. Well, the first thing I think we're definitely going to have to change is we're going to have to change our pop growth. Now, if we were an empire like a clone army, we'd be getting a pop growth of around 14 per month at this point, and we're only getting five and a half. So, so I need to find a way to get more pop growth in order to really, really tech rush. And that brings us straight back to our overlord. They conquered us at the beginning of our exploration amongst the stars, and that was probably their first mistake. We're gonna send an envoy to improve relations. We're also going to set up a lovely embassy, and then we're going to offer them a migration treaty. A migration treaty will allow this empire and our empire to open our borders and it will allow our populations to freely move. Immigration will flow. It's going to cost us a little bit of influence, but the upside might be absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. They've accepted our migration treaty. Let's check it back in on our capital. Oh my god. Goodness me, no, no, no. We've now got 13 pop growth on our capital. He can't do that. Shoot her or something. That is because we're getting a whopping 7.4 additional pop growth from migration. This is the tip of the iceberg though, ladies and gentlemen. This is a nice little je ne sais quoi that's going to start us off in the right direction for this run through but the craziness is only going to get deeper. You might be wondering why this is absolutely wild. So basically, Pops in Stellaris, they produce resources. We need our resources in order to build things. Things like ships, science stations, mining outposts. The more resources we have, the more things we can build. The more Pops we have, the more resources we can get. So doubling our initial Pop growth is completely broken. And if you're enjoying this video, please break that like button. The reason we're getting all of this fantastic pop growth from immigration is that our overlord actually starts the game with a whole heap of unemployment. They have all of these extra robots, all of these extra pops, and not enough jobs for them all to work. And that's going to push a lot of their growth off world. Luckily, we can step in to offer assistance. You may see the total immigration go down a little bit, 
but your overlord definitely has a problem and that is the finite size of their planet. They can only add so many more buildings and districts. That means that after about 25 years in the game, they get a little stuck on their capital worlds and have massive emigration. Currently, I'm getting a total of eight extra pop growth from immigration across all of my planets in 2230. As a Scholarium, that's one of the new specialist vassal types, we're going to actually get experience, we're going to level up. As long as we are loyal to our Overlord, and of course we are loyal to our Overlord, don't forget, we'll be gaining XP and going up the levels. Now, when we reach the second level, we'll get some special traits for our scientists. Those are very good for us, but we're not the only ones that can benefit. We also unlock the ability to trade our scientists with the Overlord. And that, of course, is perfectly balanced, as all things should be. So here we are, about 13 years into the game, we've leveled up. Step one of the process, I'm going to buy a scientist with both a science trait and one of the cool new Scholarium traits. This will cost me about 150 unity, which is chump change. I'm currently making about 60 unity a month. So we're going to open a trade negotiation with our overlord and we're going to offer Cecilia Underhill, our scientist, one of our very own to the Holy Velop Empire. Now, they probably will offer something reasonable in exchange, but it turns out they've decided our scientist is so absolutely wonderful. Our scientist that we just spent 150 unity on is so utterly magnificently desirable that they have a trade acceptance of 198. That means I can take 10 favors from them, I can go to their resources, and I can start asking for things. Let's say I want some minerals, why not? Let's say we need some more energy credits. How about some volatile moats and rare crystals? Now, I've also thrown in an extra 10 favors because why wouldn't I? If you'd like to buy Stellaris Overlord and also support this channel, you can do so by following the link down in the description and purchasing it on the Humble Bundle store. And there's also a sale on most of the Stellaris DLC until the 24th of May. So we've sent off this offer. We're going to trade one of our scientists for a relatively large portion of their economy. I'm sure they won't accept. I mean, it's quite clearly a, oh, oh, they did accept. But they only accepted the first time. I'm sure now they've got one of our scientists they won't want to do that again, right? Right? Well, we can just test it out quite quickly. We'll recruit another scientist for another 150 unity, and we'll offer the new scientist, Victor Walkram. Surely they're not going to say yes a second time. Oh, oh, they did. Well, isn't that wizard? And now we've got all of those favors that I just traded, we definitely need to do something about our subsidies. So we're currently paying 30% of our research income in tribute to the Overlord. That is 25 physics, 27 society, and 27 engineering. We really don't like doing this though, it is keeping our research down. Luckily though, we can do something to offset this, and that is form a research agreement. By forming a research agreement with our Overlord, we're going to gain 34 physics, 50 society, and 37 engineering, which if I think I'm doing my maths correctly, is more research than we're currently giving to them in subsidies. And we're going to do this by spending the favors that they gave us for giving them a leader that cost basically nothing. <laughs> so just to recap everything we've done so far, all of these resources, these extra research agreements we've gotten, all of the bonuses we're getting now, has cost a total of two scientists for 300 unity. And of course, it sounded like an absolutely wonderful idea to our overlord to go and get a research agreement. But that's not the only thing that we're getting from this research agreement. By having a research agreement, if we research any technology that our overlord already has, we're going to get a nice, fat, juicy 25% bonus to research speed. Even if we weren't getting additional research from our overlord from this research agreement, that 25% research speed would almost make up for our 30% cost. That basically means this 30% subsidy is completely ignored by us. We're not having to think about it at all. But luckily, we can also use some of those favors, some of that goodwill with our overlord to set things like 
an advanced resource subsidy to our empire and a basic resource subsidy to our empire as well. This means that our overlord is now actively paying us. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. We are paying them 30% of our science, but we're getting back a research agreement from them, which is completely negating that. And then we're getting 15% of our basic resources and 15% of our advanced resources, which is very much helping out our economy. What this means is that we are benefiting massively from the economy and high technology base of this advanced overlord empire. It would be very, very difficult to get the level of technological progress we are getting without piggybacking on the research of more advanced neighbors. And as your leaders get better, for instance, if you get more traits on them, now we've got the cyborg trait in 2231. Yes, we've done the first part of the synthetic ascension as early as 2231. These leaders are now worth even more than our leaders used to be worth, which is completely crazy. Don't forget to suck up favors from them and then get as many resources as you can get your hands on. If there's still walls standing, you haven't stolen enough stuff. 15 years later at 2246, I'm now going to start building some habitats. I've also rolled the options for battleships and citadels, which means the mega engineering technology isn't very far behind. Economically, we're doing really quite well. We've got quite a lot of technology, which is also being combined with an astonishingly fast research rate for only 45 years into the game. But what do you think about the new Imperial Thief Origin? Is it broken? Can it be abused? Let me know down in the comments below. And there we have it. It is 2255 and I've managed to roll the Mega Engineering Technology. To do that, I did have to research a whole host of Tier 4 technologies first, along with battleships, citadels, and the Zero Point Reactor. But this is ludicrously early. And it's important to see that our Overlord hasn't even had a Ming explosion yet, which means the leader has not died and it hasn't fractured into a million pieces, granting us our freedom. But even if it hadn't, we have the technology to make some fearsomely powerful ships, which would really be able to stand toe to toe with our neighbor and emperor. And in just a few months time, even before 2260, that's right, within 60 years of the start of the game, we're going to have unlocked mega engineering. And this is all down to the mechanic that allows us to trade leaders with our overlord. By trading these leaders, we've been able to suck our overlord's economy dry, and negotiate better and better terms of vassaldom. Even if you're not an imperial thief empire, if you just decide to become a thief of another empire, make sure to set yourself up as something like a scholarium or a bulwark, basically any specialist empire that is allowed to trade leaders to the overlord. And then instead of being a willing subject, you will be a parasite sucking resources and favors out of them at a frightening rate. I am certain that they are going to, at some point in the very imminent future, reweight this trade negotiation because basically at the moment, if you can sell your leaders for everything another empire has in the bank, that makes trade pretty damn broken. And if cheesing your vassal contracts to get ridiculous levels of science research and a cushy paycheck from your overlord isn't enough for you, check out this video on how to get free infinite alloys by upgrading your ships over and over again.